This is podcast number two, and we, so I have to read stuff apparently before the podcasts, and um, if you want to, pres- uh, if you want to prescribe, if you want to subscribe to our podcast, it's available on the major streaming platforms, iTunes, Spotify, SoundCloud, which I've never heard of, and YouTube, but I'm old. Um, so the last one we did, this is our second, you know, we have a series of these. This one's a little bit, there's no real light topic when you're in addiction, but the last one that we did was, I don't know if you even know, but we did one, uh, Stas and I about, um, that girl, Emma, who ended up going oh, to yeah. prison for 21 years. Yeah. They charged her as a drug dealer and uh, it was absolutely brutal. And so we had like a very lively one hour podcast. Um, if you've not seen that one, this is our second, not our first and then the next podcast that we're going to do is actually going to be on Suboxone. So that should be very lively and interesting. <laughs> um, you probably know, Chokey, I have a lot of very strong thoughts on the blight to the community known as Suboxone. But anyway, yes. that's not what we're here to talk about. So what we're here to talk about is interventions. And John Chokey is uh, not only a counselor at our place, but he's also, and again, we're not, this is, the point of this is to have, a conversation about important yeah. topics in, in addiction. This is not a fucking Blue Crest commercial, so we're not going to do that. Um, but, you know, you are our interventionist, and as far as I know, you've never had a failed intervention, which is kind of cool. Um, you've had some very delayed interventions where the yes. family needed to unify, and they held the line, and eventually the person caved and, and ended up listening mm-hmm. to you and going. Um, so, you know, to start off with... Um, well, I mean, I guess you could sort of in different ways, but why interventions are necessary um, in and of itself. But before we even get into why they're necessary and how it works and what's the point of it, there's different kinds of interventions, right? There's different kind of interventionists. There's different trainings. Yes. It's not like you go to one school for intervention training, right? right. There's different. Uh, tell us a little bit about it. who was your, who trained you? I mean, I know the answer because yeah. I trained with yeah. you, but who trained you? Right. What was the model? What other models are there? Just a little, it's just informational, right? Right. So uh, for me, the uh, my the person who trained me is a is a man named Earl Hightower, who is probably one of the biggest names in intervention, if that's a thing, right, to say that. Mm-hmm. But he's a guy who's been doing it probably since the early '80s. Uh, he's well known in the recovery community. West Coast guy, right? West Coast guy, but you know, in, in America, he's uh, you know, in, in recovery circles, he's very, very, very well known. Um, he. Um, he trained me in a variation of the Johnson model, right, which is a pretty standard, probably the first intervention that would, type of intervention that was developed. Uh, and, and, and the idea is getting a family together uh, as a team and uh, getting your loved one, the person who you're going to intervene on, uh, getting, them, getting them there on a kind of like a false premise. You know, <laughs> you don't really want them to know. You want to blindside them. Yeah, pretty much because, you know, with addicts and alcoholics, we are the type of people who, uh, if you give us enough time, we'll come up with like a whole defense strategy about why this shouldn't happen <laughs> and you guys are mistaken and I'm okay and we're not, not going to do not, this. Not that they need a lot of time to come up with right. that strategy. Yeah, we could do that pretty quickly on the fly, but if yeah. you give us time, like we're masters. <laughs> yeah, you know what true. I mean? So it's, it kind of it, it falls under that premise. And you know the basic, the basic idea, I think a lot of people are familiar with the idea of family members writing some letters um, and basically the letters are really more of a way to have like something to refer to. We want, when, when, when you first bring somebody in, you kind of want to have, uh, your thoughts and your ideas concise, right? You want to have something a, a, on a piece of paper that you can refer to and you want to get through that process pretty quickly. So I think a lot of people are familiar with that. Maybe they've seen the, the TV show intervention, right? I so, mean, I've seen the TV show yeah. intervention and I've seen real interventions yeah. and it's a little bit different, right? Yeah. I mean, the TV show is not exactly, it's edited, you, you know, know it's, it's not, yeah, exactly. Right. It's edited and it's for TV. So when people think they watch the intervention TV show, they think they um, know how to do it. You know, they yeah. know how to do it. We'll get into that. It's one of the things that just to touch on is people who decide they're going to do their own interventions. But before we get into that, you're the orchestrator, right? Isn't that the whole point? Like you kind of filter everything because it's really all them. Family does all the work. You're the yeah. conductor of the orchestra, and you basically filter everything. You make sure the letters are concise. You get rid of the nonsense. Yeah. You try and kind of gear them towards, hey, you may want to be a little less damning in this letter and maybe keep it a little more positive, right? Because, right? right. you know, the different family members are also, it's a weird, don't you think the dynamic is strange when you go for an intervention and the family is 
angry as hell at the person, but they also are scared for them yes. and want them to get help. But then once you start getting into what it's going to look like, the anger comes back yeah. out again. Haven't you experienced there's that? A lot, there's a lot of complicated emotions that happen. I think that one of the, the, the most common denominator in every one that I've done is when you actually do the intervention, it's probably the most uncomfortable you're going to feel. It's the, it's the conversation nobody wants to have. Right? Everybody's been dreading this conversation. Everybody already has ideas in their head about how it's going to go. It's not going to go well. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's not going to go well. They're going to, like, explode and kill everybody in the room. You know, like, stuff like that. There, there's a lot of fear that goes into it. And it is very, very, very uncomfortable. And nobody really wants to do it. Have you ever done a single intervention where the family doesn't, someone in the family doesn't start for going, well, let me just say this isn't going to work. Like, they all said the same thing. Well, just work. so you know, with him, I know you've done interventions with him or right. with her. It's not going to work. It's so not, this is yeah. pointless. I'll, I'll be involved, but this is just, you know, you don't understand. This yeah. is every single one has that. So and actually, you know, and I'll, 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 I'll go back to what I said in the beginning, which is why interventions are necessary in the first place. See, interventions, when you're some of the work that we do in the sober world, right? Like when you're somebody who's sober and some people might know 12 step call right? Mm -hmm. You're part of some fellowship out there and we do it, man, for fun and for free. And you're out there and you go, a 12 step call is a different kind of thing, right? I've gone on a lot of 12 step calls in my life. And somebody's like, Hey man, you know, this guy's drunk in his house and he's been locked up for three days. The mom calls you the friends. You get a couple sober people together. You head over to the apartment, you go in like, dude, what's going on? And you go sit down to talk to him and try and get him right minded and be like, dude, come on, man, you got to get out of it. I'm not doing anything. I'm not doing anything. You'll try for a couple few minutes and then you'll be like, all right, well, here's my number. And yeah. you know, if you change your mind, whatever. Give me a call if you ever change your mind. Intervention's a whole different thing, Completely right? Different. Once you get to a point where you feel like someone needs an intervention, the job of an intervention is to get somebody, and I'm, I'm looking at it my way, but, and you tell me what you think, but the job is you're getting them to stop using or drinking or whatever their thing is mid-run where they have no intention of doing so, no plans yeah. on doing so, it hasn't been thought about, discussed. And anybody who knows addiction, when I'm in the middle of one of my, you know, yeah. two or three month absolute I epic runs, stop. you're not gonna, stop right. is not even a, a, not yeah. even a, point, a point of conversation. It's a ludicrous. Situation. Right, so an, an intervention is for somebody who either, they don't know they have a problem, or if they do know they have a problem, they're not interested in any solution or stopping, right? That's who the intervention's for. So yeah, every time you hear at least one person say it's not going to work for this person because they don't want to stop. That's why you need the intervention, right? Because right? right. they don't want to stop or they don't want help or they don't want to go away. Obviously, the addiction is totally taken over and I'm not looking to be put away and taken away from what I, what is my solution, right? right? So I think like, you know, you think about the idea of like a 12-step call, right? And obviously that what you just said is perfect. It's like, if I go on a 12-step call and you're not interested in help, all right, you know what? Here's my number. If, if you ever change your mind, feel free to call Intervention is completely different. Mm -hmm. If you have somebody that really does want help, you don't need an intervention. Right? right? You just need you just need some a twelve stepper to go take them to either a, you know a program or to you know a meeting, right? The intervention is for we know this person is going to die if we don't actually do something to intervene in their addiction and their death. They're going to die like this, or maybe they may take some other people out with them before that happens. Yeah. Right? Now the nature of this conversation is always stream of consciousness, so you kind of jump from different places, but. You know, the truth is, and that's one of the, I don't know if it's a paradigm, I don't know what you consider it, but when you talk to moms, like I'm just going to give an example from some of the ones that we've been involved in. And, you know, you do an intervention with a mom or a family and you have a kid who's a heroin addict. Let's just, you know, it could be anything. We've done all kinds of alcohol, yeah. drugs of different kinds, but I'm just thinking of this one example of the heroin addict. And, you know, it's a very real concern and consideration for a family where, the, when you first get involved with the family, your thing is we have to be on a unified front. You've got to get yeah. the family on the same page that after today, this is no longer an acceptable right. uh, arrangement for right. us. You live in our home. Right. You're no longer, this is, you, as right. of today, everything has changed. Right. And you got to get them on. They need to be willing yeah. and they need to be not, there's no more bluffing. I'm sure these parents before have said, if you don't, I'm going to throw you out. If you don't do this, I'm going to stop paying for this. If you don't, if you don't go here, oh, that's it. I'm done with you. That stuff. So those are empty right. promises. You're getting them on page where everyone actually gets a unified front. But the mom's fear is, and this is what you're yeah. going to hear. 
I hear what you're saying, and I want to be able to do that. But in the end, if I kick him out, right, they're afraid that they're they, going to die. What yeah. if they die, and then right. I'm responsible? I kick them out of the house, and then they overdose. Right. And, and what, they they're, what they're afraid of is already happening. Right. Which is the point. Yeah. What you're afraid of is already you're happening. You're afraid he's going to leave and die. He's dying in the next room. Yeah. Whether or not you give him a chance at actually having that moment of clarity because he no longer has the port in the storm, yeah. you create a scenario where maybe there's an interruption in that. Otherwise, he's just going to overdose in the room next to you. Like how many hours that of the day coming. can you peek in, you know, with the Narcan yeah. in your pocket waiting for him to, you know, that day is yeah. going to, you're and you know, there. And you know with, you know, uh, we do family sessions here and the families that we deal with, how many family members, and moms especially, moms are, you know, what what addicts put moms through it's it's harsh right mm -hmm. but my, like the things that moms will go to, the the extent that they'll go to to try and make sure that their baby doesn't die yeah. right and 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 completely well meaning they 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 they're trying to make sure that nothing happens to this kid and in in the process of trying to protect them it's actually hurting them even more right because it's allowing them to continue on the way that they're going and you know the 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 point that you kind of brought up in in what you're saying about the unified front when when we cut when somebody contacts me, and they go, we want to have an intervention. We're going to put together the team of people who are going to be a part of this intervention, and then what we're going to do is we are going to meet and we're going to have an open, honest discussion about where you're at with this. Per what's your relationship with this person? What do you think actually has to happen? Do you believe that this is a problem? We're going to go. We're going to go through everything, and at the end of it, everybody has to be on the same page, which is. We know this is this is there's no debate about whether this is a problem. It's that's not on the table. It is a problem. The thing that we're here to talk about is you getting help today, right now, right? And everybody has to be on that same page. If you have people that are off in different pages, then it's gonna blow. It's gonna blow. But the you don't you don't allow them in the intervention, right? Like when we do, right? If when you do the process that when you first interview, there's the families, a weeding out process. You yeah. weed people out. Yeah. Like you even have people who are very close to them where you're like. <laughs> Absolutely not. You can't right. be a part of the intervention. Right. And the other family's like, yeah, but they're very close. Right. Yeah, but he's not going to actually help right. in the intervention. He's way too... How many times have you had somebody that you knew based on all the information you got, all the info, you interview everyone separately, right. right? So if there's six possibles to be a part of the intervention, you'll have a separate phone conversation right. with all six and you'll ask them your questions. You'll get their feedback. How many times have you talked to five where you're like, I can't believe this guy's still alive. And then one of the other people that's very close to him, you talk to them like, I don't know, everyone's making a big deal of this. Right. It's not even really it, ha it does happen sometimes. And sometimes you can get those people to in discussion. It, it then shifts. Or if they're going to stay in that position, they're pro they're not ideal for the intervention. So right. you don't want them. So like sometimes you have to make that call and, and say, listen, we're going to do this. You're asking me to put this together for you. This person is not, It's they're not going to be ideal for the for the intervention. Yep. And that and those decisions have to be made. And the, basically as an interventionist, that's what I'm doing is putting together all the background work that goes into getting the family together on the same page on what what it what's our strategy going to be? Because obviously with every person, it, you don't have the same dynamic, right? Sometimes you're doing an intervention and it's the kid and the parents and brothers and sisters and stuff like that and they're dependent on the parents. And that's easy because you can figure out what the the carrot and stick is real easy with that sure. right because they're financially dependent how, how much did you value supervisions right with high tower like when you were first and, and doing the, it for the first two years of doing interventions he's the best still, let's be honest we still call earl yeah even after two years of doing it uh, successful interventions you still want to call earl and you still want to say look i gotta run this intervention by because the guy yeah. sees through to stuff where Love him. Love him. i mean i remember the first time with the dog thing right remember with the dog where that was yeah. the big you knew he was like oh i already know you're only gonna have one thing to get by in this intervention yeah. is they're not gonna leave their dog and yeah. you're like what and like oh yeah it's a dog lover oh they're never gonna and we hadn't yeah. been with anybody who had that kind of a connection with yeah. the dog before and he saw it and how right true did that turn out to be during that yeah he has he has an amazing ability to see things that you probably wouldn't normally see yeah, yeah. which has been helpful because it's it's helped me to see things i wouldn't look for either Right. So pretty cool. It's yeah. like an Earl commercial. But it's true, though. And to have somebody that has that kind of an ability definitely helps you to hone your craft. It's important. Because intervention, man, if you do a successful intervention, you know, and this is, you put a big weight of responsibility on you. Because, and I know you look at it that way. You yeah. know that if this intervention doesn't work, that person may never get another opportunity. Yeah. They may never get another opportunity. That's the reality of what goes on out there today. You know, they may not be around. Yeah. 
Uh, absolutely. Well, and the other part of it, like you said, when we were talking about before, uh, the intervention itself, that conversation is the conversation nobody wants to have, and it's the most uncomfortable you'll be, but it's followed by, if you get a yes, the relief and the happiness and the freedom. I mean, it's literally like you feel the, the pressure go right out of the room when all of a sudden somebody's going, I'm not doing, I'm not doing, a uh, fine, yes, I'll go. <laughs> and all of a sudden they just get crowded by their loved ones and they're kissing on them and hugging them and telling them they love them, they're proud of them like that. That's the that's the, the reason you do the whole thing is to, to, to get somebody to break down, say they'll go, and then like we're out of there that that day. No yeah, and then out. they're always surprised at the yeah. prep work because the prep work that goes into it, the yeah. bag is already packed. Yeah. Everything is set up, ready. The arrangement's already been made right. with the detox or with the res so depending on what they need and where they're going. Bag's already been packed by mom. Everything is ready yeah. to go. When the person finally breaks down and says, fine, I'll go. Uh, will you go to treatment today? Fine, I'll go to treatment. And all of a sudden, the, bags the brother comes out with the bag, <laughs> drops on the and they go, say, you mean now? And they go, wait, what do you mean? <laughs> yeah. Like, right this second? Yeah. I thought you meant like tomorrow. No, 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 we're going right yeah. now. And then you bring them into yeah. your car as they look out the back yeah. window like a right. puppy dog watching the house fade. Well, yeah, just like, just like how you don't want to give them time to come up with defenses for why they shouldn't go. The same thing, once you get a yes, right? Once you, by the way, whenever, whenever you get a yes in the intervention, I don't care what part of the intervention, you get the yes, everything stops. We're done. I don't care if you had like 10 more things to say, we're done, <laughs> right. you're going, right. you know, because you don't want them to have any time to go, wait a second, maybe, mm. no, nah, nah, you know what, next week, much better than, Take you know. yes for an answer. Yeah, take yes for an and answer every time. go out the door. Yeah. So can you tell us an intervention story? Tell us, I mean, I know you've had some crazy interventions, some yeah. crazy stories. Can you tell uh, an intervention story? I mean, obviously you don't have to use names. And yeah, no, I wouldn't use names or anything stuff, like that. But, but like, you know, just like a lot of, there's a lot of audibles that get called sometimes in interventions, right? Mm -hmm. Like the one that sticks out for me was we had this one guy who was, uh, he was living on the street, um, young guy, he's panhandling, and a family member who, who was working near where he was pan, you know, hand, panhandling saw him. And he's and he goes to the family, goes, listen, you know, I, I saw him there. He's been there for like the last week. We need to do something. So we set up, you know, I, I speak with the family. We set up, set up the intervention. We're going to do it um, at one of the, you know, the parents' uh, houses. And, uh, and we invite him to come. And, of course, he doesn't show up, right? <laughs> like, can you believe an addict is like they're, <laughs> they're not going to be punctual or show up? You know, so that's what happened. So then now you have to, you know, it's an audible. Like, what are we going to do? So we come up with a plan. We're going to go to the spot where he was seen panhandling, right? So the next day, me Ooh, and the family. How, you and how many family members? There had to be about maybe six or seven of us. And you guys all met and went we to all, a red, a red right. light. Well, we, well, actually what we did was we waited to see if his uh, brother who had seen him, if he was there again the next day. And sure enough, he was. So we get the, red, the green light. He's there. Let's converge. So everybody jumps in their cars and we all converge to the spot where he was last seen panhandling. And then we get there and of course, sure enough, he's not there, you know, like surprising. So now we go, okay, so now what do we do? So now we start walking around asking, you know, other people on the streets, hey, have you seen this guy? Do you know this guy? And sure enough, you know, some of the people that were, you know, characters, you know, that he <laughs> consorted with, they knew him and they go, yeah, you know what? He likes to, he likes to ride this train and he likes to go to this spot over there. So now we get on the train, and now we start, like, we're, we're riding the trains looking for this guy <laughs> to do an intervention on the street. You know what I mean? Like, it was it was pretty, you know, got pretty hairy. So now we get down to the spot where he was, no, you know, he's known to like to frequent. And we get there, and we're, it's like a good hour later, you know, like we've been on the trains for a while. We get to the spot, and now we go to a couple different places, and sure enough, oh, I know, I know that guy. And it was funny because, like, the people that we were asking, it's like they were happier for him than he would when he found out what we were doing. <laughs> right. Because they're like, oh, my God, people actually care about this guy. You know, like, they're looking for him. You know? Sure enough, we go looking, and he, we can't find him there either. But I know at the, at the end when we finally go, okay, we've done everything we could today, I go, for sure he's going to know we were looking for him today. You know? And sure enough, that night he gets a, uh, his mom gets a call, He's furious that, you know, what are we doing? What are we looking for him? Blah, blah, blah. Um, and we get him to agree to meet with us again the next day. We go to meet him in a public space because that's the only place where he'll meet us He'll meet us in. And uh, 
long story short, right? We finally we finally find him, and he just goes crazy. He he threatens to pull a fire alarm at this mall. It's just he actually pulled it, I think, and nothing <laughs> happened. It was a, it was a weird situation. We talked to the guy, and uh, I mean, this is going. This was like a couple hours now with this with this one person. And we finally get him to go. You know, I, I finally get to speak to him. He's, no way, I'm not doing it. I won't go. I said, all right, you know what? I said to the family, we did everything we can. If he's not going to if he's not gonna say yes, there's nothing we can do. Now, just because you get a no the first time doesn't mean the intervention's over. It just means round one is over. Right. So round one is over. You know, we spoke to him. He got the message. He said no. Doesn't mean it's over, but okay, it's over for today. We leave. We all get in our cars. And we start to leave, and on my way back to the office, maybe about, I'm in the car, maybe 20 minutes, mom calls me. And she goes, he's on the phone right now. He says he will go to treatment, but I got to get him a couple bags first. You know, so now it's like the dilemma of, listen, this kid, if, if mom gets the bag and that's the bag that kills him, big problem. Yeah. You know what I mean? So uh, there's, all, there's all these things that can go into the intervention, like like how things can twist in all these different ways. At the end of the day, um, mom didn't buy the bag, but he, he went and got the bag to get right and then got in a car with dad. And finally, and this is like hours later, finally at the end of the night, gets to detox and went to treatment. Yeah. And that was just one of, that's just one of those ones where you have no, you know, a lot of times like you, you know, you set up an intervention, you have a plan and it's like, what did Mike Mike Tyson say? You have a plan until somebody punches you in the face. Yeah, right? like, everyone's got a plan yeah. until you get punched. Yeah, until in you the get face. punched in the face, right? Like, so you have a plan, right? And sometimes, you know, like, you know, God laughs at your plans, right? Yeah. And so, in that in that particular case, it was just like a two or three day ordeal to finally get this kid into treatment, you know. And it was like, it was a lot. A lot went into that. And then you know, like we get a lot of, uh, uh, not a lot, but there's some where you get runners, you know. One in particular, we had this kid who, we're, me and the family were waiting at the house, and uh, mom, he calls up, mom says, yeah, please come right now, you know, blah, blah, blah. And usually you want to have somebody bringing them to the place because you want to have that person there that kind of guides them in and shuts the door behind them mm -hmm. so they don't have a chance to escape. And this one, you know, he was coming on his own. And this kid walks into the house, and literally, it was like maybe point two, five seconds. Like he saw us in the living room and before anybody could say a word or anything had happened, this guy was out like a shot yeah. and he runs out of the house and we get up and I come walking out of the house and he just happened to live in a long, like a long block, you know, it was like a long city block. I come out and I just see this kid running and running. He's getting smaller and smaller. And I go to the uncle's going to get to the car. I go, okay, he's, He's, and, he, and I see him looking over his shoulder as he's running, and he hangs a right. And I go, okay, he hung a right. And then about 30 seconds later, all of a sudden, I see him running the other way. <laughs> nope, he's going left, right? And it's like it's just like you get runners. You get people. A lot of times, it, you know, because we live in the age that we do today, people know about intervention, right? Yeah. So a lot of times, people show up to a room where there's a bunch of people, and some of them haven't been in their life too much lately, and they're all in the same place at the same time. They know. Right, so they'll run. So you have to have these kinds of plans in order to get them in. You want to have the conversation. We're not there to trap them, by the way. You know, we just want to say, listen, let us say your piece. We just want to state our case. You can go. You can do whatever you want when we're done, but just let us say what we have to say. Yeah. And that's really the idea behind the intervention, getting the message across about here's an opportunity for help. Which is the point of the, the whole, you know, when we think about different, you know, things to have podcasts on, right? You can do a podcast. I mean, the whole point is to get information out there to pass along some experience, some get people thinking about, you know, what works, what doesn't, what's a good idea, what's a bad idea. You know, the audience who watches this kind of stuff, you know, hopefully in our mind, hopefully it's a family who's kind of struggling with like, do I use this? Do I not? You know, maybe you look up interventions and you see something like this where we say, I've heard it a hundred times. How many times have you heard people say, oh yeah, intervention where you write those stupid letters and, you know, like everyone thinks they understand what an intervention is. You have families that try, and we talked about it earlier, that try and arrange their own intervention. Well, we're going to just do the intervention ourselves. Yeah. You know, it's not, you know, the training that goes into it is, is, is extensive and the experience and the guidance that comes from doing appropriate interventions is extenuous as well. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's, 
There's a lot that goes into an intervention right. in arranging it, in filtering right. everything, in choosing who and how and why, the yeah. order of which the letters. You've got your cleanup batter, that last heartbreaking yeah. letter that's going to be read that's going to just bang the whole thing home. Like you literally order everything. Everything is arranged and orchestrated in a very particular way. And the honest truth is, and again, this is the point of, of this kind of topic is that when you have somebody out there, don't, you know, don't, uh, Herbert Spencer, right, contemporary investigation, I don't care if you don't think an intervention would work for this particular person. You've not done a single intervention that I'm aware of that they didn't say that, that this is never going to work because you don't understand because this person right, at least somebody never work. Someone say. looks at it that way. Yeah. But the truth is it does work and it can work if it's done properly and you could save a life. And sometimes that's what's required. It doesn't matter. People might have gone, oh, he's already gone to three different rehabs or whatever, and he's not going to go back. You know, and, and, and an intervention is more, and this is another point that I, I would bring up about the difference between interventionists and interventions and how people look at it, trainings and models and different ways, like you use the term variation. There's a lot of variations and ways that you can do interventions. My favorite thing about intervention when it's done appropriately is the fact that an intervention does not mean that you meet with a family, you orchestrate this entire thing, you plan it out properly, you go to the end, you get the person to concede and say, fine, I'll go. Bags packed, you drive them, you drop them off at the detox, high fives all around, and then you go back drive to your by. life, and yeah. you know, good luck with everything. A real intervention means you stay, and, and you, you can speak to it, but you stay involved in this family's life. You know, you're, yeah. you're in for a penny, in for a pound. When you invite us in, when you're invited in for an intervention, yeah. You now will touch base with the person while they're in detox, yeah. while they're in residential. You're planning on, okay, what fellowship would they, you know, depending on what they yeah. do and what they need, there's some kind of 12-step aftercare. Maybe it's a therapist or a psychiatrist. Maybe it's depending on the nature of the person. Some have co-occurring disorders, but you're working with the family on coming yeah. up with an aftercare plan, and you don't just come up with the plan and say, okay, here's your aftercare plan and good luck. I know you go up and visit them when they go to some of some of them require going to 30 or 40 day stays someplace yeah. and you'll go up and sit with them and check in on them. You'll meet their counselors. You know, everything is different depending on where it's at. But I know you've you'll yeah. meet them when they come out. You'll yeah. you know, the whole thing, right? Can you can you speak? Part, well, yeah, part of the planning that goes into the intervention is obviously where are they gonna go? Mm -hmm. Right? They say yes. Where are, we, where are we sending this person? Obviously, you want to send them. You know, we don't. We hate talking about this, but it's a part of. It's a reality. All right. Well, their insurance information, right? Where where are they going to go? That they're going to basically be a match insurance wise, and then also where are they going to get the best treatment? It's important, sure. right? You don't want to just send them to any place, right? So there there is definitely certain um, places that we know about. Obviously, we love our place. We're not here to do a commercial about our place, but you know, there's places that we uh, obviously yeah. right that that you know, we will send people to because we believe in what they're doing. We know that, that they're doing good work there. Um, what about the Medicaid people? Hardest thing in the world. That's very hard. You know, yeah. a proper intervention means you have a bed lined up. Yeah. When they say yes, that's your window. They say yes, the bag is already packed. We do that for a reason because yeah. there's a window of willingness. You've gotten them, you've hit the heart, you've gotten them to concede, yeah. they're deflated, they're like, fine, I'll go. Now you've got to, now hopefully it's not a four-hour drive because somewhere yeah. around the three-hour mark, they may be like, you know what, I don't yeah. know about, but you get them into the car and so if you go, the bed is waiting, yeah. You okay, good luck, they take them in right. and they just, the process just yeah. goes. With you Medicaid, have somebody with like Medicaid, that, yeah. you can't line up a bed. Yeah. Now you get them to concede. Right. This is the hard part. Like, this is the reality of, yeah. like, I'd almost like to have some kind of government program where they have, like, intervention beds. <laughs> you know, like yeah. Medicaid intervention beds where, right. you know, the person's not, you know, looking to come into treatment. But if, the, if the, and you'll know, at the end of the intervention, we've had a time before where you were like, this is round one. My guess, and I've seen you say it before, like, eh, it'll probably be two days. Two days that person will be out of the house, living on the street. They'll stay at a friend's couch. And this character is going to come back in two days and tell the mom, all right, fine, I'll go away to treatment. But, you know, you'll call the place and you'll say, look, we're not going to need the bed for a little bit. It's fine. Right. Um, but with Medicaid and people who don't have the kind of insurance or the ability to pay yeah. privately, doing the intervention is a little bit differently. And it's much more difficult, right? Right. So, you know, why intervention, by the way? So that those are the kinds of things that I take care of. Right, like I'm, I'm, I'm the person that's making sure. Okay, they're gonna get into this place. The place knows it. They have a bed reserved for them. Day of the intervention, they understand it's intervention, so they may be getting a person they may not be, but they're on call and they're ready. And we're gonna transport them. Yeah. It makes it a lot harder when it's you know Medicaid because of you know you can't really do that with it. So it's that's that's a, a little trickier. 
But you know, there's a lot there, there's a lot of considerations that go into when you get a yes from somebody, that's not the end of the story. That's like now, okay, now this is the the, the beginning is done. Now what's going to happen in treatment? Treatment's a whole other animal. You have a family, by the way, we talk we talk about alcoholism and addiction being a family illness. You have family members that need some help. They need to get some treatment for themselves, whether it's private counseling, maybe it's uh, Al-Anon, Nar-Anon, right? One of the family programs. They need to find out. They need to get educated about addiction. They need to understand that the old way of doing business is not going to work. A lot of times, like if you have a kid that's being that's going out to go get help, and then he's going to be coming back home afterwards. If you don't change anything in the house when they get back, sure. chances of them relapsing are high. Codependent, no more. Yeah, I mean that's an, an aspect yeah. of it, right? Is codependence. And yeah. I mean, there's a lot of this trauma. Some of the moms are literally traumatized. Yes. Literally traumatized of what they've dealt with this kid for so long. And so and and that's a part of it too. Right. Like how many times have you gotten the kid to go away and when you're now you go to the mom and you're like, you need to come with me. You yeah. need to come and sit with us. Come to our family yeah. group on Wednesdays. You need to sit down with a counselor. Yeah. Young lady, you need to speak to somebody because you need to address you. It's yeah. brutal. And they but they go into the intervention and they think the intervention is about the addict or the alcoholic, right? Everybody thinks it's about him. It's really about the whole family. Yeah. The whole family needs help. And the intervention, really, everyone should be addressed in some sh- way, shape, or form. And at least one of the people that's involved in the, ev- in the intervention should seek some kind of outside help for themselves just so that they could get the information and understand how they've been affected by addiction. You have no idea the trauma that happens to people when they're living day in and day out with somebody and they don't know what condition they're going to be. They don't know if they're going to be alive or dead, if they're going to be sweet or total a uh, total nightmare. They don't know. And what it does to people is just, it's, it's crazy. It's, you know, we call it PTSD. Yeah. Yeah. So, all right. I mean, listen, it's, you know, we're not, I mean, you, you could talk about intervention in 80 different ways. And I know you have a lot of other stories, but I mean, the whole point was, is just to kind of put it out there, man, that intervention is definitely a very useful tool. It's something that you can definitely save a life. Um, if any message that I would give from it is don't, you know, don't let, foregone conclusion that you think there's no way this will never work whatever it can work it does work if you have a good interventionist that knows you know knows the deal and can properly prepare for it, you'd be shocked at some of the outcomes um i'll throw it out there that we're always available for guidance and suggestion and you know you can always reach out to us um if you go look at the podcast and you'll be able to get in touch with john trokey I mean, you can ask john trokey questions um, and that's for anybody, you know, anybody who sees this that you're not, you know, we did mention the Medicaid thing and it's not easy. It's still doable. And then it becomes the question of what time you do the intervention and having the phone numbers ready for the places to see if there are beds and it's not going to be seamless, but there are ways to do it and ways to arrange it and times to do it where you can give them the best chance of that thing actually happening and going down. Right. I mean, that's the, so, uh, reach out. You know, I mean, there's so many cool professionals and people who know their, know this business and know this stuff. And, you know, there's, it's, it's real deal, man. There's, you know, lives on the line and intervention is definitely a helpful tool. Troke, thank you, man, for your uh, you. insight. And I know I, a couple of the stories I would like for you to have told, but, you know, it's... Uh, the one about the guy who wanted to stab me? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was a good one. <laughs> well, real, I mean, real quick, before we end, <laughs> before we end, one of the, one of the ones that was, uh, you know, wasn't funny at the time... But it's funny now. I went. To, I go to do an intervention, and the guy is just not having it. Leaves the house. He's outside. He won't talk to us. We go outside, and I say to him, "I say, listen, buddy. I know you don't know me. And and listen, every intervention, they don't care about me. They care about their loved ones. I'm there to be like the. I'm actually the the object of hatred, you know, because <laughs> I I seem to be the person that's. Made a lot ruining, of problems. You're, yeah, you're going to ruin You're ruining it. my life. So I go, you know, I understand that. And I said, but I, I, I understand you don't know who I am. And he goes, he goes, let me stop you there. I don't care who you are. And if you come near me, I'm going to stab you. <laughs> and I said, all right, <laughs> I don't want to be stabbed today. We'll, we'll talk to you later. <laughs> I'm going to be over yeah. here. <laughs> all types, all yeah. kinds. All right, well, thank you for coming. Thank and you. Um, again, I'll reiterate that if you want to subscribe to the podcast, we're on YouTube and Sound. SoundCloud. SoundCloud. You know SoundCloud. YouTube, SoundCloud, I SoundCloud, iTunes, and something else. I'll get better at this as we go along. But um, the next one is going to be uh, Suboxone. Awesome. And that's going to be, this is more like an information thing, and I think it's important because I think interventions are important. But the next one is going to be kind of 
it could be a little bit uh, brutal, and we're probably going to have a couple of guests, and there might be four of us to have kind of a heated conversation on what Suboxone looks like. So stay tuned. Thank you.